We are coming on the air with breaking news from the White House tonight, where President Biden is about to speak at any moment now about today's Supreme Court decision on presidential immunity. It comes after the court ruled along ideological lines. You see it right here that former President Trump does have some immunity from criminal prosecution for official acts as president, but not unofficial acts. That decision is still a huge legal win for Mr. Trump, effectively raising the bar to bring criminal charges against any president. It also marks a huge setback for special counsel Jack Smith's federal election interference case against Mr. Trump and possibly his document, his classified documents cases as well. As we sit and wait for the president to take the podium there in the cross hall at the White House, we actually see the president right now. Let's listen in. Good evening. The presidency is the most powerful office in the world. It's an office that not only tests your judgment, perhaps even more importantly, it's an office that tests your character. Because you not only face moments when you need the courage to exercise the full power of the presidency, you also face moments where you need the wisdom to respect the limits of the power of the office of the presidency. This nation was founded on the principle that there are no kings in America. Each, each of us is equal before the law. No one, no one is above the law, not even the President of the United States. But today's Supreme Court decision on presidential immunity, that fundamentally changed. For all, for all practical purposes, today's decision almost certainly means that there are virtually no limits on what a president can do. This is a fundamentally new principle, and it's a dangerous precedent because the power of the office will no longer be constrained by the law, even including the Supreme Court of the United States. The only limits will be self-imposed by the President alone. This decision today has continued the Court's attack in recent years on a wide range of long-established legal principles in our nation, from gutting voting rights and civil rights to taking away a woman's right to choose to today's decision that undermines the rule of law of this nation. Nearly four years ago, my predecessor sent a violent mob to the U.S. Capitol to stop the peaceful transfer of power. We all saw it with our own eyes. We sat there and watched it happen that day. Attack on the police, the ransacking at the Capitol, a mob literally hunting down the House Speaker, Nancy Pelosi. Gallows erected to hang the Vice President, Mike Pence. I think it's fair to say it's one of the darkest days in the history of America. Now the man who sent that mob to the U.S. Capitol is facing potential criminal conviction for what happened that day. And the American people deserve to have an answer in the courts before the upcoming election. The public has a right to know the answer about what happened on January 6th before they asked to vote again this year. Now, because of today's decision, that is highly, highly unlikely. It's a terrible disservice to the people of this nation. So now, now the American people will have to do what the courts should have been willing to do, but will not. The American people have to render a judgment about Donald Trump's behavior. The American people must decide whether Donald Trump's assault on our democracy on January 6th makes him unfit for public office in the highest office in the land. The American people must decide if Trump's embrace of violence to preserve his power is acceptable. Perhaps most importantly, the American people must decide if they want to entrust the president once again, the presidency, to Donald Trump, now knowing he'll be even more emboldened to do whatever he pleases whenever he wants to do it. You know, at the outset of our nation, it was the character of George Washington, our first president, to find the presidency. He believed power was limited, not absolute. And that power always resides with the people, always. Now, over 200 years later, with today's Supreme Court decision, once again, it will depend on the character of the men and women who hold that presidency that are going to define the limits of the power of the presidency, because the law will no longer do it. I know I will respect the limits of the presidential powers I have for three and a half years. But any president, including Donald Trump, will now be free to ignore the law. I concur with Justice Sotomayor's dissent today. 
She, here's what she said. She said, in every use of official power, the president is now a king above the law. With fear for our democracy, I dissent, end of quote. So should the American people dissent. I dissent. May God bless you all, and may God help preserve our democracy. Thank you. And may God protect our troops. What makes you so confident you should be the president? That was President Biden criticizing the Supreme Court's decision on presidential immunity. We waited to see if he takes some questions from the assembled reporters there. He chose not to. I want to go straight to our senior White House correspondent, Kelly O'Donnell, who joins us live now. Kelly, the president clearly upset, saying he dissents as well, like the uh, minority in this case with the Supreme Court, clearly upset with the Supreme Court's decision today. Very much so. And the president, who is a lawyer, was speaking with that experience, as well as someone who has possessed the powers of the presidency over the last few years. Implicit in what he had to say is also a campaign argument that the president makes about the choice that voters would have in November. Of course, many people are wondering, what will that choice include? Will Joe Biden remain on the ticket. He did not take questions on that subject. He has not addressed it publicly beyond what we have seen so far at one rally in North Carolina and at some fundraisers where he intends to stay in the race. There are still questions for uh, those in the Democratic Party about whether they will support him, and some are saying they will wait for polling on this. This was an official speech from the president about the actions of another co-equal branch of government, the Supreme Court, and the president giving a warning that the power of the presidency would have no limits if a president does not use judgment, wisdom, and character. So an official statement from the president, but certainly campaign ideas, themes, and messages were implicit throughout his remarks. Tom? All right, Kelly, stand by for us for more on the politics at play here. Let's bring in our senior Washington correspondent, Hallie Jackson. Hallie, throughout this speech, the president kept pointing to the people, right, the American people right. who will vote in November, saying they will have a say in this, that maybe there will be no trial in this case, but there will be some type of trial when the voters vote in November. Yeah, he said it's going to be up to the voters, to the American people, who will render the ultimate judgment here in this character case that he has laid out, as Kelly so well noted, against former President Trump. That is central to the argument that the president has been making for months now, that his campaign has been making. I will tell you that today's ruling has triggered a deep sense of dissatisfaction among some Democrats, not just with the decision itself, but more broadly with the court. You had former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, for example, suggesting that the justices, in some instances, have gone rogue here. You even have Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez suggesting that perhaps she may seek to file articles of impeachment, presumably against some of the justices, when the House returns, when Congress gets back into session. That would be symbolic. The House is controlled by Republicans. It almost certainly wouldn't go anywhere. But it gives you a sense of how frustrated I think some Democrats feel. On the flip side of the coin, you have former President Trump taking yet another victory lap here on this, Tom. He is calling this decision a big win for him. And listen, to be clear, politically, it is, because this virtually assures that there will be no verdict in this federal election interference trial until after the November election. That is what he, that is what his team have wanted all along here, and it appears that that is what he is going to get. That's echoed by allies like House Speaker Mike Johnson, who's saying that this ruling is a victory now for the rule of law. So a lot of reaction, a lot of fallout from this monumental ruling today. And President Biden there, in that very brief speech, again, as you note, no questions there, but really laying out what he sees as the stakes, not just today, but come November as well. Hallie, I have a couple of questions for you. You know, on the flip side, you were talking about a victory for the president because this means there's likely not going to be a trial before the election. We'll get into that with Danny Savalos, sure. who's also standing by for us. But I want you to explain this to our viewers, right? Because there was a there was a chance and a good chance before this decision, he possibly could have to be in trial in court while the campaign was going on into November. Yeah, that's right, because the judge in this particular case, again, the one brought by special counsel Jack Smith, had suggested that she would want to wait about three months from the time that she got the case back from the Supreme Court until the time they moved forward at the trial. But here's the thing. For the reasons that you have laid out, for the reasons of the decision of the Supreme Court today, a lower court is going to have to sift through specifically what evidence may or may not be introduced here, given this roadmap that the Supreme Court justices have laid out between what is an official proceeding, what the former president did that can be considered among his court constitutional duties and what is done in his private capacity, alleged crimes that he did in his unofficial capacity, acting not as president, but simply as a private citizen. 
That's going to take a minute. That's going to take a little bit of time. And that is why you are seeing this political win for the former president here as we head to November. And let's talk about the optics here, too, Hallie, right? The president clearly on defense right now because of that debate. There was an opportunity here to speak to the American people from the White House and, again, show a side that is completely opposite to what he showed at the debate. And that is after that widely panned performance seen by many Democrats as simply, in a word, disastrous. His campaign has been scrambling to do some damage control here. So like you, Tom, I was interested to see, would the president maybe take a couple of questions? He hasn't done much off a teleprompter setting where he's reading from a script since that debate night. That obviously did not happen tonight. We'll see if that happens in the days ahead here. But what's also interesting here, Tom, even tonight, you have seen some top Democrats, right, members of the Senate, members of Congress, come out and say not publicly that they believe that the president should step aside. So far, we've heard that anonymously from some Democrats and in these op-eds from The New York Times, from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, suggesting that President Biden should step down and should be replaced on the ticket. But you're starting to hear concern about how, for example, some Democrats say they weren't really prepared for what they were going to see on Thursday night in the debate. You're hearing more uh, vocal discussions about the conversations that are happening inside the Democratic Party. Now, the Biden campaign, as our colleague Kelly O'Donnell well knows, is pushing back vigorously on this. And you have First Lady Jill Biden, even today now, out in Vogue magazine, saying that the family does not believe that those 90 minutes on debate night should define the four years of the presidency so far, suggesting that he and the family will continue to fight. Uh, and you are seeing that, of course, from the campaign tonight. All right, Hallie Jackson, for us, Hallie, appreciate that. For more on the legal aspect of this case, I want to bring in Danny Savalos tonight. Danny, Hallie was just explaining to us there about what the official and unofficial duties of the president are going to be and that a lower court judge is going to decide that. What are they going to look like and how do they exactly figure that out? Well, the lower court will decide that on this particular January 6th federal case in D.C. And the judge has a real challenge because it is easy to say in principle that there's such a thing as official conduct and purely private conduct and then maybe even these core executive functions. But actually applying them to the facts can get much thornier. Indeed, the Supreme Court even took some of these decisions out of Judge Chutkin's hands by saying on some of the indictment uh, facts, you have the conversations with DOJ officials. Those are absolutely immune because they fall within that core executive function category. But uh, you could take almost every exercise of executive power and call it either purely executive or motivated by private, private interests. Here's a further challenge. The Supreme Court says that you cannot look to motive. So arguably, even if an executive action has an evil motive underlying it, a purely personal uh, interest uh, uh, motivating that executive action, the court appears to say that you cannot uh, consider that. So uh, this is a real challenge for the lower courts. And then the other three criminal cases, uh, in, to the extent they have to do with official action, some do more than others. The Georgia case makes a lot of the same allegations that the uh, District of Columbia case does. So that is probably the ripest for attack by the Trump defense team now that they've got a very favorable immunity ruling in their hands. And Danny, briefly, because I want to get back to Kelly O'Donnell, who's got some new reporting. I do want to ask you, does this essentially kneecap, if you will, the January 6th uh, case that Jack Smith brought against the president? It does. And here's why. First, anything that is arguably core presidential conduct is out. And the Supreme Court already took some of that out. The conversations with high-level DOJ officials, that is no longer, that's absolutely immune, that will not be prosecuted. But then going back, the magic word, and maybe the most important word in the entire opinion, is the word presumption. As it goes back down, this is not a do-over. Donald Trump benefits from the presumption that his conduct is official. The burden is on the government to prove that it is not official. So Donald Trump starts this race out ahead as it goes back to the lower court. It may be that that is the most consequential word in the entire opinion, the creation of this presumption of official conduct. Probably, arguably, the biggest surprise uh, in this case today. Danny Savalas, we appreciate that. Kelly O'Donnell is still at the White House for us. Kelly, I know you have some new reporting about how this speech came together. 
both White House officials and those at the campaign had expressed to me today they wanted the president to be more visible. And so his remarks tonight actually represent a hurrying up of his schedule and return from Camp David and pulling together uh, the work behind the scenes to make these remarks tonight so the people could see him. Of course, he didn't take questions as we discussed, but this was a way for the president to be on stage and visible after Thursday night. Tom? He spoke for about five minutes again. Yeah, we were all waiting to see if he'd answer some of those questions, mostly about the future of his campaign. But he looked at the reporters, he turned and decided to walk off. Kelly O'Donnell, we thank you for all of your reporting. We want to thank Hallie and Danny Savalos as well. That concludes this NBC News special report. We're going to have much more ahead on our streaming network, NBC News Now, online at NBCNews.com. And tomorrow morning on Today, I'm Tom Yamas in New York. We thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.